if we do nothing or if we, we, we manage everything as we would do on a normal year, um, you could end up with a lot of extra sheep on the farm come September time. And again, that starts putting pressure on then when we're trying to focus on, on getting the yews ready for breeding, you know, having grass for them and get them through breeding. So it could be that, you know, keep a close eye on it even from now on, that if it was a thing that maybe starting a finishing group, maybe that little bit earlier or something, just to try and take some of the pressure off and get some sheep moving that could be a you know a more efficient way of, of dealing with the problem than maybe hoping that things will come right and then ending up with a, a bigger problem as as we get on later on hello i'm kieran lynch and welcome to Obicast, the chocolate sheep podcast each episode will bring you latest insights advice and technical updates for the sheep industry now in this week's episode we're taking a grazing focus and we're joined by dr philip creighton we discuss grass supply and soil quality and some of the factors that are influencing this at the moment we move on to discuss management options for the coming weeks and we finish up the episode discussing fertiliser applications. We hear first from Philip. It's been a, a strange sort of time here in terms of, of, of growth, I suppose, I suppose when things dried up. Um, it stayed very cold, so, you know, um, the kind of traditional bounce we'd see there, I would say, in terms of when you get into May and early June, when temperatures would be rising and, you know, gro- growth rates would be increasing, Um just to give the example, even here in Atten Ride this year, where we'd normally start seeing the peak growths up around, you know, heading for 90 kilos of dry matter per, per day. Um, that We never really hit that. And when I, when we looked at the, the the average growth rates there, we say throughout May and into early June, the the average growth rates, um, are, they're back about 20%. Um, on on where it'd normally be. So, but that's not surprising, I suppose, given the the, the much cooler conditions we we had there. You know, it was very cold evenings and that, so it was restricting growth. Um, and it has just left, I suppose, where where normally to be grass building up. You know, in most cases, maybe people are okay for grass, but there hasn't been much surplus or or much of a chance to build in front of us. So, it, it's presented challenges, and and the other challenge then, I suppose, it's it's added another stressor. So, um. This time of year, you know, it's perfectly normal and part of the, the plant's normal function that it would, you know, go to seed, try to reproduce. Um, but, you know, we always talk about trying to minimize the, the stresses or, you know, the, the, anything that might be lacking to try and, you know, reduce the impact of that. But again, there was an extra an extra stressor there that maybe wasn't normally there in terms of the, the, the lower temperatures and that, which 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 left grass going to go on to seed maybe a bit quicker or, or persistent you know reheading maybe happening as well so there's probably two aspects of that we'll, we'll deal with a bit more the quality and quantity issue again we're back at it as also the quantity point of view for as you touched on there look at everyone in the country will appreciate growth rates have been lower certainly regrowths philip over the last couple of weeks have been slow we got little blips where we got heat yeah. it took off again definitely didn't hit the peaks we don't see as much surplus coming out no, definitely not. No, it ha- it has been challenging. I suppose one, the one immediate thing we touched on in last week's episode was weaning can have a big impact if supplies are tight on farms at the moment. It's probably the one thing that needs to happen anyway. Yeah, and look at you know, as I said, you touched it already there in previous episodes there, and the whole thing about weaning and, and prioritizing groups and that. But um, I suppose where 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 grass grass growths are reduced maybe and demands are, are, are high and even just trying to manage quality um weaning is 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 an opportunity there to start prioritizing what grass is there and and maybe try to simplify the management a little bit so the priority for us is to keep lamb performance good and um, keep lambs moving um so you know if there's a bit more stem around in swords or whatever um you know you 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 put the lambs into the best swords you have and then if it's a little bit behind in quality compared to where it might normally be, um, then your option is maybe remove the lambs that little bit quicker and put yours in behind. And the way I would describe it is that, you know, on a normal year, maybe you'd, you'd have some surplus grass on the farm and you might be taking out some of that for bales or whatever. If if that surplus isn't there this year, you have the option of, you know, you can reset some swords, maybe if they are very stemmy or whatever, um, with, with the more. Or as is the case now, once you've weaned, you know you can use the O's as a, as a, as a as a way of cleaning up some 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 of them sores as well. Like you know, and I suppose we just do have to stress as well, like that sometimes you know, as I say, it's totally normal for for grass to go to 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 seed and to have stem in the sward this time of year. Stem isn't necessarily 
uh, the biggest issue. If there's still plenty of leaf there, there's plenty of, of, of digestible material there for the lambs to eat and will continue to drive performance. And then it's just managing when is the most appropriate time to take them out of that and put them into the next best available field and just get yours in then to start resetting or to, or to, 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 to bring the quality back for the next graze for the lambs, you know. I think that's the important point you touched on. Look, stemmy source is probably two big types out there. There's one with that's just got a bit stressed naturally at this time of year, a bit of stem in it, a lot of leaf. But we do also see the other type, Philip, particularly this year where conditions just haven't been ideal, got dry in certain places too. Maybe where sword quality wasn't maintained as good in the previous rotations, where it is kind of gone and it's not really suitable for lambs. Yeah, and look at it. It was a challenging, uh, challenging spring, and uh, you know where where fields maybe that would have normally been grazed out good and tight in the early part of the year, and that's setting it up to make maintain good quality. Then as we get into into the summer, that just wasn't possible in cases um, because of the, the very poor ground conditions and grazing conditions. So there's definitely going to be fields there that maybe were managed differently the way they normally would be, and for good reason. Um, and and they're probably presenting a, a few more challenges um, than they normally would be in that case. And I suppose the other side of it then is you know uh, with the with the more challenging ground conditions that as well. Maybe there was there was differences in the way fertilizer was applied, um, <clears throat> or maybe much lower levels applied in in the in the earlier part of the year. And again, that was perfectly right in terms of you know not spreading fertilizer in inappropriate conditions but um, that could have had an effect a knock-on effect as well and maybe maintaining quality so that's another thing that maybe needs to be looked at in terms of the the what fertilizer has gone out to try and maintain leaf um, and again reduce one of those stressors if 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 it, if it is lacking and um, particularly in nitrogen or, or in general if 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 your p and k levels are or whatever are not maybe in sync and um, then that's going to add a stressor and, and and make it harder to maintain quality in, in the sport as well. So, look, as well, it goes to highlight, you need to know what quantities and fields are heady, but sometimes no harm just looking and seeing what is the actual quality like here. Yeah. In terms of some of them stem your swords, Philip, I suppose the obvious thing to do, but there's a lot of leaves still there, you know, pulling them lambs out at a bit of higher residual. Yeah, so look, and then, you know, we talk about, you know, maybe not letting lambs graze below six centimetres or whatever, but the way, the way really, in reality, where those kind of targets come from is that you're trying to leave it that the lambs get the majority of the, of the best of the grass in terms of the, the majority of the leaf content and then what will be left to be the poorer quality or the semi or grass so it's, it's it's nearly a visual thing that if you can't see much leaf left then it's time to move the lambs and it's probably irrelevant what 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 height is there but generally it's in around don't let them go below that and um, but that'll be a field by field uh, basis as well but that's the that's the idea is that, that you're not asking lambs to graze any of that poorer quality material because that will have a negative effect on performance and if we start reducing growth rates now or stalling you know you, you know uh, the performance that's going to have a knock on effect right throughout the rest of the, the summer and autumn yeah it's going to be one of the biggest impacts on pushing them lambs on um look you touched the weevil and fertilizer there Probably in a lot of farms this year have been difficult in terms of getting ideal conditions to get out early on. Typically, at this time of year, we'd be scaling back a lot. Just given the growth rates there's been at the moment, the fact that maybe not as much has gone out earlier. Going with a bit more nature, Philip, at this time of the year, maybe picking your areas to spread it, keeping a bit of regular top up on it. How important is that at the moment? Yeah, well, it's important, I suppose. I wouldn't be saying maybe people need to go with more, but I suppose the, the limitation up to now hasn't necessarily been the amount of fertilizer that was out. It was more weather conditions, so it was either too wet or too cold or whatever, and that hampered growth um, in conjunction with maybe, you know, reduced levels of, of, of fertilizer out. But definitely, you know, at this time of year, we'd be saying, you know, it's important to have a level of, of, of nitrogen out there to try and keep the quality in the swords. Um, and depending on, you know, stocking rate or whatever, you, know, you might be talking 15 to 20 units to the acre in terms of keeping things moving, keeping up with demand. Um, and, you know, as conditions, you know, we have had warmer weather now of, of late and that will, that will um, you know, increase the soil temperatures, which had been behind below normal, I suppose. So you will you will start getting better responses there. So. Um, that that'll have a knock-on effect in in hopefully improving the the regrowth. As you said yourself, you know regrowths have been slower than than normal and maybe has put pressure on in in certain places. Um, and 
you know, by weaning, that's going to help with that pressure because, you know, you're going to reduce your demand and you'll be able to assign, uh, allocate grass better to, to, to the priority groups. But it will help then that, you know, we're starting to get a response then as, as the more appropriate temperatures and that are, 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 are hopefully there now, you know. Look, hopefully it boosts things on. Look, Philip, again, I suppose it's the time of year where it highlights the benefits of having nutrient management, having your side samples taken. The impact of side fertility, your peas, your kids, if there's an allowance there for compounds at this time of year, I suppose it's going to have another impact on it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose we just, I had only mentioned there about nitrogen, but obviously, like everything, you know, if the other parts of the, 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 the soil are, aren't in balance, so critical thing as we always say is to have a, a you know a recent soil test or whatever you know within the last couple of years and and do do your nutrient management plan and it's even more important now i suppose in terms of your nutrient management plan and in making sure that you have allowances there for your pea or whatever to make sure that whatever you are applying you're getting the best value from it that you know if you were maybe restricted or whatever that you're applying it to the places you get the best response so the, you know the younger swords the more productive swords on the farm um where you're going to get more value from 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 whatever money you do spend on fertilizer. But the simple things are there, having the soil test done, having the nutrient management plan done, and then, you know, starting with your lime, you know, correcting imbalances there straight away, and then deciding, you know, what parts of the farm am I going to go after in terms of trying to increase my indexes if 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 they do need attention. We're not expecting anybody to be able to go out and bring everything up to an index tree, uh, you know, um, in a in a short space of time. But it's about you know working with what you get, what you have, and what you can do to 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 improve the thing bit by bit. Like, well, just in, for some people only going straight nature, maybe the addition of sulfur this time of the year will that have an impact on that? Yeah, so again, I suppose, look, at it, it can be farm specific, but if there's a need for sulfur there, this time of year, you're going to get your best results, um, best responses from sulfur, really, from your kind of April, May onwards into 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 August, September time. Is, is, is If there's a deficiency there, it certainly will help to have sulfur um, included in, 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 in the fertilizer, yeah. Look, we've covered kind of the basics in terms of, you know, where growth rates are at, some of the challenges we've seen, the fertilizer story. If you maybe just go back to the grazing groups, like I suppose this is again plant specific. If you're trying to build covers on the farm, maybe get things reset a little. In that post weaning period, we still probably have a month there where we aren't under too much pressure to split things up. Keeping the grazing group simple, maybe establishing the finishing group early is an option for some, but maybe just trying to keep them grazing groups fairly simple and maybe look at the paddocks and that as we're working through it as well. It's another thing that'll have an impact on performance, but also your grass on management this summer. Yeah. yeah, so just like we talk about it in spring or whatever, the, the thing with the grazing groups and trying to increase growth rate or recovery in terms of growth rates is is to have as, as, as few a number of groups as you can so that as much of the farm as possible is getting the opportunity to grow. So... Uh, you know, minimizing the number of grazing groups at the moment, as you say, at the moment, it's 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 going to be simpler to maybe do that as we move through the summer and into the autumn. Maybe we're going to have to start splitting out into more extra groups, whether it's, you know, extra finishing groups, ram lambs and yo lambs, etc. So at the moment, um, you know, keep it simple. Try and have as many as much of the, the, the area, as many fields as possible growing at the same time um, and that will help to maybe increase the growth rates now as as growth recovers. Um, and hope to build back up a, a bank of grass. And I suppose the, the one thing we should mention as well is that maybe, you know, because growth rates have been behind where they'd normally be, it would be important that people maybe assess where they're at now in terms of, uh, you know, winter feed. So whether it's hay, silage, whatever you normally use, um, how much have you got made at this stage? How much would you normally have got made? Um, and, you know, how are you in terms of, you know, what you're going to need? Um, because for some areas, you know, that maybe suffered the, the most in terms of the, the, the stress of the weather conditions or whatever, um, you know, there could be a shortfall there and it's about planning out how that's going to be dealt with um for, for the the rest of the season there as well. Um or else we could be in, in trouble for the winter, you know. Just something you mentioned there and it's interesting, we're talking about budgeting ahead. Probably the other thing we need to budget for, Philip, is the fact that lambs probably are a little bit behind this year. Maybe on par with last year, which was another challenge in the year. Yeah. Yeah. So a little, again, little, little bit of plan ahead heading into the autumn. There might be an extra round of fertilizer needed. There might be some other additions needed to keep that supply going that we probably will have more stock coming in August, September. 
Yeah, and I suppose, again, the earlier you recognise that, the better in terms of trying to take corrective action. So, again, you're absolutely right. If lambs have been coming in maybe a little bit lighter at weaning um, because of, you know, a tough spring on them, maybe they haven't recovered from from those earlier days where, where performance was back. Um, if we do nothing or if we, we, we manage everything as we would do on a normal year, um, you could end up with a lot of extra sheep on the farm come September time. And again, that starts putting pressure on then when we're trying to focus on, on getting the yos ready for breeding, you know, having grass for them and get them through breeding. So it could be that, you know, keep a close eye on it even from now on, that if it was a thing that maybe starting a finishing group, maybe that little bit earlier or something, just to try and take some of the pressure off and get some sheep moving. Um, that could be, a, you know, a, a more efficient way of, of dealing with the problem than maybe hoping that things will come right and then ending up with a, a bigger problem as as we get on later on. Well, appreciate you, Ron. It's good getting that update today from you. Thanks, Kevin. We'll leave it there for this week's episode. I think Philip has highlighted some of the challenges that we've seen in recent weeks and some of the options we need to consider on farms and the management tasks that can be completed. That's it for me for this episode. For updates on our sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagas Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts.